Hey guys, it's that Dividend Guy coming at you with another stock market news update. So I've been seeing a lot about Disney <coughs> and the price fluctuations and whatnot. So <clears throat> I wanted to check out this article by Barron's. Disney stock is a buy, analyst says, because its future is in streaming. So let's take a look at what they have to say about uh, the future of Disney. Putting a value on Walt Disney stock today requires balancing near-term COVID-related headwinds to its theme parks, movie, and television segments against its long-term potential in the global direct-to-consumer streaming market. With movie theaters closed, theme parks operating at limited capacity, and advertising pullback, recent results have been ugly. But physical distancing requirements have also led to a surge in demand for at-home entertainment with Disney Plus and Hulu enjoying the benefits. Despite the pandemic, Disney, ticker symbol DIS, isn't in danger of going out of business. With a balance sheet able to weather the storm, that means investors should set their sights on the company's long-term trajectory. Because the, the Disney that comes out of COVID-19 crisis will be meaningfully different from the one that went in. Through early August, Disney Plus garnered 60 0.5 million subscribers worldwide since its debut last November and continues to add millions of subscribers each month. Hulu and ESPN Plus, the other legs of Disney's streaming strategy, have also grown significantly during the pandemic. Disney plans to further capitalize on its streaming momentum with the introduction of a new international streaming service next year to be, to be named Star. It will include content from ABC, FX, and other Disney properties similar to the Hulu in the U.S. Still, that subscriber growth isn't translating to profits for Disney. The direct-to-consumer con streaming markets is the land grab phase, according to the bank media analyst Brian Kraft. Disney has ample opportunities to earn the segment into its primary profit driver down the road, Kraft wrote in a report on Tuesday, and subscription businesses come with attractive and predictable reoccurring revenue models. Scaling direct-to-consumer in this land grab phase of the industry is key to success for Disney because it will drive significant opportunities to monetize a large subscriber base in the meaningful way down the road. Through one higher pricing, B leveraging Disney Plus base and distribute soon to be launched star branded streaming service, and C an inevitable shattering of today's exclusive theoretical window to make room for new premium video on demand windows that enhance monetization of film studio output and add consumer utility to the Disney Plus service. Upgrading Di uh, Kraft um, upgraded Disney stock from a buy to a buy from a hold. Disney Plus currently costs $6.99 a month or $69.99 annually, about half the cost of Netflix, which ended the second quarter with 193 million subscribers worldwide. Last weekend, Disney released its twice-delayed film Mulan, a big-budget remake of the animated classic, as a $30 premium streaming offering to Disney Plus subscribers. Uh, management has emphasized that it's not a permanent shift away from theoretical releases, but depending on how it goes, Kraft sees Disney mon monetizing future new releases via premium streaming options. Kraft also notes that Disney's coming to streaming strategy focused investor day will be a chance to remind stakeholders of its early success in streaming and its long-term vision for the business. That could lead to positive earnings and revisions and fundamental support for a higher stock price. We believe management's overarching message will be that the strategy is working and Disney is accelerating its streaming efforts to build a very large global direct-to-consumer business. We believe Disney has the right, the right combination of content, distribution, user experience, technology, and management expertise to be successful. Cross Model has Disney's direct-to-consumer business as the most valuable segment in the company at about $182 billion, or eight times its 2023 revenue estimate of $22.6 billion. Netflix stock currently trades for 8.3 times its enterprise value to 20 to 2021 estimated revenue. Kraft assumes 171 million Disney Plus subscribers at the end of its fiscal 2023, which ends in September and higher monthly prices in several markets. Kraft's sum of the parts valuation assigns 237 billion equity value for Disney in 2023 after accounting for uh, monetary interests and uh, companies debt and the company's debt load. That translates to 161 or sorry, 163 price target, about 21% above its stock market recent 135. Disney's stock was up 3% on Tuesday versus 2.7 decline in the S&P. Disney's down more than 5% since the start of last year, but it surged 59% since its late March low. The September, uh, the S&P 500 has returned 7.5% year to date and 50% since late March, including dividends. Disney suspended its dividend earlier this year to conserve cash. So, um, I, I actually agree. Um, I've, I'm definitely a Disney bull long term. 
Um, and I do think that the revenue uh, that they, the revenue loss that they've had this year is pretty substantial due to the fact that three of their biggest segments, uh, were one of one of the biggest segments being the parks, um, advertising was was slashed, um, movies were pushed back. Uh, they had a lot of issues this year just because of the industry that they're in, but their balance sheet is beautiful. So they, I mean, it's Disney. They have, you know, they have, they make cash hand over fist. Um, so they were prepared to weather the storm, but they have seen a significant cut. About 33% of the revenue was lost due to the parks being closed because that's a really big money maker for them. But as we've, as they've discussed in the article, I don't think that's where their money, their future money, money maker is going to be. I think it's in Disney Plus. Uh, I thought it was kind of crazy that Disney was selling the rights to their their properties to Netflix when they could just make their own. And then once I heard they were getting into Hulu, I'm like, oh, that's they're gonna pair that up with ESPN and they're gonna make a big because people want sports. So it, it just made sense. Um, and I think they're right. I think the money the money maker for Disney. Um, is going to be in the streaming service because just like they did with Mulan, they could easily just take movies away from the theaters. They won't because it's a really, you know, the box office is where they've made their money for years and years when it comes to, to, to films. They've done theoretical releases, but they now have an alternative if something like this happens or maybe they don't think a movie will do very well in the theater or so, something like that. They have an alternative and they can release it and uh, on Disney Plus and, char- and upcharge um and the thing is, honestly, if you think about it, if it's like eight bucks a ticket and you have a decently big family, it could be cheaper to put the money on Disney Plus and just do direct to consumer versus going to the theater. Um, and since movie theaters are kind of in decline, I do see that being the no- the new norm eventually, especially with the pandemic. I don't think a lot of them are going to survive. I know AMC is really struggling. I know Marcus isn't doing too hot right now either. Um, and the smaller movie theater chains. Excuse me. Are, uh, are struggling, so I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, that becomes the new thing, because, I mean, if you think about it, Disney's got its own streaming service, Warner's got its own streaming service, Netflix is huge, um, H, um, uh, Comcast is rumored to be coming out with their own, so the big, like, four, but besides Viacom, I, I don't know if they do or if they're planning on it, but most of the big, you know, entertainment companies, their production companies have their own streaming service now, so they're not really reliant on the theoretical releases. They're not reliant on the movie theaters anymore. They could pretty much change the business model completely and just release on um, on streaming services. But anyways, guys, um, with that being said, I do think Disney Plus is the big growth factor for them, just like I think AT&T's big growth factor is HBO Max. Um, I think streaming is, of course, it's the future, but it's, it's the present. I mean, you know, cable TV is going out. I think movie theaters are, are kind of on their way out now, too. Um, so I think that's where the future of movies is going to be is streaming. So I think Disney was very smart to get into the game when they did. They are, they have a monstrous amount of content and they're, they're a heavyweight when it comes to the space. Immediately they were a heavyweight because kids love Disney. I grew up with Disney. I'm sure you grew up with Disney. My mom grew up with Disney. My mom's mom grew up with Disney. Like it's just, it's generational. And when a company is etched into our DNA, essentially, like we grow up with it. Um, we just, we want to pass it on and we want to share it with our kids. So that's something Disney has that very few companies have is that generational love for the, for the brand and the loyalty, um, and the admiration of, you know, generations. So anyways, guys, I think Disney is definitely a buy. I have it on my watch list for my portfolio. I've owned it in the past. I did cut it when they cut their dividend because it was a strict dividend growth play for me. Now it's a, now it's a div, now it's a growth stock. So I'm okay with holding it, and I'm a huge Disney bull. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite Disney movie is down in the descript- or down in the comment section. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button, and when you do, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any updates on my YouTube channel, That Dividend Guy. If you're a fan of passive income, you know stock market news updates, Warren Buffett portfolio updates, Tesla updates, I do a bunch of content. So, uh, stay here, stick around, because I have a lot more videos coming. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.